Now, turn to section one. Section one. You will hear a conversation between a clerk and a tourist about a short trip. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning, wonderful travel agency. How can I help you? Good morning. I'd like to know about the information about your short trip. What's the name of the trip? Magic One Day. Right. Could you introduce me to the tour? Of course. The name of the trip is Magic One Day, so Magic One Day has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one. To five. Good morning, wonderful travel agency. How can I help you? Good morning. I'd like to know about the information about your short trip. What's the name of the trip? Magic One Day. Right. Could you introduce me to the tour? Of course, and we will give you a five percent discount if you book the latest trip. Fine. When is the next one going? We have a trip every Saturday, which usually departs at eight o'clock in the morning. And when will we come back? About six o'clock in the afternoon. Fine. How about the type of transportation? We like to keep our tours small, so we offer a coach or a minibus. That's great. So, how many tourists are there in one group? Usually, we take about fifteen to twenty tourists, but you know it is peak time now, so the number is up to twenty-five tourists. Well, that sounds good. So, how much is the tour price? As I said, I will give you a five percent discount, so the cost is eighteen pounds for each person. Great. Does it include lunch? No. But the guide fee has been included. Do I need to book a seat? Yes, at peak season, in order to ensure your position, seat reservation is needed. So the tourist has to reserve a seat at least two days before leaving. Now, look at questions six to ten. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions six to ten. Okay, and how about the deposit? You don't need to pay any fees in advance. Fine. How about payment, cash or credit card? Because we collect money just before departing, the only payment we accept is cash. Fine. I see. That's okay. And let me confirm you with your customer reference number. Fine. That is F C eight six four. Right, I'll, I'll write it down. How about other things? Do you want to know? Uh, yes. I'd like to know what attractions we will visit during the tour. Well, let me check the time schedule. We will start at eight o'clock. And we'll arrive at Edinburgh about ten o'clock. 
The first resort we will visit is old castles, the most famous Scottish castles. It is the home of the Scottish crown jewels, the oldest royal regalia in Britain. Well, may I take photos? Of course. I heard that the city hall is a good place. Will we go there? The next tour does not include that place. OK. And then we will go on to St Giles's Cathedral with 1,000 years of history. It is renowned for its stained glass, regal organ and beautiful thistle chapel. Great. Is it near to the zoo? Yes. After lunch you will visit Royal Palace. It is a good place to know about royal family's life, but it has a rule with no photo. Right. But you can pick some souvenirs in the local handicraft shops close to the palace. Great. And about four o'clock we will get to the Seabird Centre. Do you mean the aquarium? No, they are different places. OK. Uh, does it have an animal performance? Sure. You can appreciate the play of dolphin and sea lion. It sounds good. About six o'clock we will return. If you need other information, please read our tour booklet. Fine. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye. This is the end of section one. Now, turn to section two. Section two. You will hear a conversation between a doctor and a student. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Good afternoon, Doctor. May I come in? Yes, come in. I'm a freshman in the university and I don't feel very good. OK, sit down, please. I need to record some basic details about you first. Fine. What's your full name? Mary Nixon. Is your surname spelt... N-I-X-O-N? That's right. Well, Mary, what's your major? I'm studying art. A good choice. Tell me your registered number. Registered number? Sorry, I'm not sure. Maybe... Did you bring your union card or library card? Yes, I brought it. OK, well, tell me the number on your card. It is M N zero nine one eight. And your birthday? I was born on November twentieth, nineteen eighty seven. Where are you from? I come from New York. Oh, we are from the same city. Really? Yes. Where do you live? Campus accommodation? Actually, I will move out from campus flat tomorrow. I rent a house in North West with three friends. Fine. Tell me your present address. It is 17th King Street. OK. And your contact number? 367-8259. Right. Uh, now let's get some of your medical background. OK. Have you ever had any serious illnesses or accidents? I got gastritis when I was in middle school. Did you have an operation? No, I just took medicine and had some injections. Anything else? No, nothing. Now, look at questions 16 to 20.
Now listen to the tape and answer the questions 16 to 20. So, Mary, what's your trouble? Well, recently I've been having some trouble with my head and eyes and nose. Oh, no. I think I've got a terrible flu. Maybe or maybe not. Describe your problem specifically. OK. Since last week, I've been sneezing, and sometimes I can't stop, and even later I begin to feel dizzy. Do you get a fever? No. Did you attend any unusual activities during the last week? Let me think. No, nothing special. Yeah, I had camping last Monday. To where? Eastern Mountain. You know there are lots of beautiful flowers. We took many photos there. So your illness has lasted for one week? Yes, but sometimes I'm fine. I don't know why. Do you have any allergies? I remember I got allergic to mango when I was a child, but now I'm fine. How about flowers? I mean, pollen. You mean I'm allergic to pollen? Yes. What should I do? I suggest you take some medicine first and drink more water. OK. And then, if your symptoms are getting worse, I suggest you go to a hospital to check. OK. Thank you very much. I hope you will recover soon. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. This is the end of section two. Now, turn to section three. Section three. You will hear a conversation between a new student and a lecturer. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Good morning. May I come in? Yes, come in please. I'm a new student and I'm looking for the Office of Engineering faculty. Is this the right place? Yes, this is the Faculty of Engineering. How can I help you? I know there was an orientation meeting last Friday, but I didn't attend that meeting. So I'm wondering if someone could give me some information about, you know, the campus life or course requirements or something like that. Yes. Sit down, please. Where should we begin? Firstly, how many lectures do I have to attend every week? You know, there are not too many lectures of postgraduate courses. Let me check. Oh, you have lectures on Monday, Wednesday and Friday afternoon from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. How often do I have to attend seminars in a week? Well, there is only one group seminar on Thursday morning at 9 o'clock. You mean a group? Yes. How many people are there in one group? About three to five. Fine. You will discuss about 20 minutes and then the representative of your group will give a short presentation. A presentation? Right. Do all members in the group have a chance to give a presentation? Maybe. And then your subject advisor will give you a mark. A mark? Does that mean the representative's mark is all members' mark? That's right. How about attendance? The postgraduate attendance is only 70%. But a few students will be absent in our faculty. Fine. Should I choose the time? Because I have a part-time job. I am afraid not. You know, the postgraduate course is very intensive. We do not suggest that our students do any other jobs. Yes, I see. I will spend time on my course. Oh, 
How many modular courses are there in the coming academic year? You have three modular courses from September to June next year. OK. Now, look at questions 26 to 30. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 26 to 30. Anything else I can help you with? I'd like to know some information about the course assessment. Well, beside presentation, you will have an exam at the end of the term. An exam? What type of exam? It's an open book exam. Fine. But your main assessment is the assignment. You mean homework? Yes. You will have to write an assignment with six to seven thousand words every month. Six thousand to seven thousand? Yes. Oh, how about the topic? Your tutor will give you some advice on the topic based on some course handouts or reference books. But you have to narrow the topic by yourself. So can I choose the topic of essay by myself? Yes, of course. Great. You must pay attention to your essay deadline. All assignment work must be handed in before the deadline your tutor gives you. When should I visit my tutor? You should check your tutor's name and contact number on our website. Fine. Do you have a library card? No. I have not applied for one. I think you should register for a library card first, because you need it when you borrow reference books from the library. OK. I will apply for one tomorrow morning. Anything else? The last thing is, how can I get my username and password for our university's website? First, you should go to the computer centre to register and then they will give you a username and password. That's fine. Thanks for your introduction. You are welcome. See you later. See you. This is the end of Section 3. Now, turn to Section 4. Section 4. You will hear a lecture about an animal living in South America. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Welcome to Magic Animal Time. Today I'd like to give you an introduction to a magic animal called sloth. Native to Central and South American rainforests, the sloth is the slowest animal on Earth. It needs 12 seconds to finish one step, even slower than a tortoise. Algae grows on its brown, furry back because of its inactive lifestyle. Even the fur of sloths is adapted to their lifestyle. Sloths usually hang upside down, so their stiff, wiry fur grows differently from the coats of most mammals. Horses' hair, for example, grows from the back, so rainwater will run off. Below this tough top layer, a dense, downy layer of hair provides additional protection from pesky insects. The greenish cast of the sloth's shaggy fur is caused by symbiotic algae that grow in grooves running along the length of each of the mammal's outer hairs. 
The sloth hosts the algae, and the algae return the favor by providing nutrition that the sloth either ingests by licking its fur or absorbs through the skin. The grayish-green color makes the sloth look just like a clump of dry leaves hanging from a branch. The perfect jungle camouflage. And the longer a sloth lives, the greener it gets. Sloths have a short and flat head, a snout that is short in length, big round eyes, long tree-climbing legs, a stubby tail, and small ears. And though some have called them ugly, they have the cutest face that looks like they're always smiling, just like a koala in Australia. Sloths spend most of the day sleeping. Curling up in a tree notch or hanging from a branch with all four legs closed together, their heads tucked between their front legs. People seldom see them much move, even when they are awake. Only at feeding time, sloths move more slowly and carefully, hand over and through the treetops, searching for leaves, fruits and twigs. They even mate and give birth while suspended from their long curved claws. Sometimes a sloth will die, hanging upside down from a tree limb, and remain so after death, until they decompose or are forcibly removed. Why do sloths have such an unusual lifestyle? It's the strategy they evolved to survive as tree-dwelling plant eaters in a place with many predators. Most domestic herbivores, such as cattle, horse and sheep, graze all day long. Because they feed on nutrient-poor vegetation, they must eat almost constantly. Sloths are also classified as herbivores, and their diets are also low in nutrition. But rather than munching all day long, they have become masters at conserving energy. As any athlete knows, Maintaining muscle requires large quantities of food energy, far more than a sloth's vegetarian diet can provide. Sloths are relatively inactive and usually spend most of their day hanging upside down. So they can get by with half as much muscle mass as similar sized mammals. Hence they don't need to eat too much. In addition, because of heavy muscle, sloths weigh far less than other mammals. This makes it possible for them to climb on thin branches high in the tropical forest canopy, where they can more easily find food and avoid heftier predators. Keeping a high body temperature also takes energy. Sloths fulfill this need by maintaining a lower average body temperature than other mammals. Dogs, cats, horses, sheep and cows all have average body temperatures between about 100 and 103 Fahrenheit. But a sloth's average body temperature is about 93 degrees Fahrenheit. Equally important, a sloth's body temperature fluctuates with the surrounding temperature. Like snakes and frogs, which are cold-blooded creatures, a sloth's body temperature is highest on warm sunny days and lowest at night and on rainy days. Sometimes a sloth takes a sun bath in the morning, warmed up. Then during the hottest times of day, it hides in the shade so it won't overheat. During a 24 hour period, a sloth's body temperature may vary as much as 10 degrees Fahrenheit. If the body temperature of a person, a cat, or a dog varies just 5 degrees Fahrenheit, it can be life-threatening. Because sloths have difficulty moving over land, they spend most of their time in the trees. They can get just about everything they need high above the forest floor, even water, which comes from eating juicy leaves and licking up drops of morning dew. Short bursts of feeding, followed by long periods of inactivity, make sloths less vulnerable to large raptors, such as harpy eagles and other carnivores, such as ocelots. 
As long as sloths remain perfectly quiet and still, they're nearly impossible to detect. At feeding time, a sloth reaches out, grabs an overhead branch with its flexible feet, and tugs until the food is within reach of its long tongue. After pulling the vegetation into its mouth, the sloth clips the leaves with its hard, tough lips and slowly grinds them with a large, peg-like teeth. A sloth digests its food just as it does everything else, very slowly. People usually digest their food in about a day, but sloths can take about a month to finish the process. As soon as a sloth swallows a mouthful of pulverized plants, the bacteria in its stomach and intestines begin breaking down the food. It takes many hours for the bacteria to digest the tough plant material that makes up a sloth's diet. Only then can the sloth absorb the nutrients it needs to live and grow. So, do you have a new understanding about the slow but not lazy animal? Next week, we will talk about... This is the end of Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.